Then the rest of the walk around, a fuel check. The TSI has nice sumps in the, the bottom of the tank, right at the end. So if there's any moisture, you'll see it in a little gas as that. So I make sure no water in there. I give it a sip to make sure it's gas. <laughs> no, the old trick and it becomes habit to smell the gas to make sure it's gas and not all water. So again, fuel check on this side. Do a little check there. It's clear. It's all gas back in the tank. When I check the fuel while I'm down here, I'll also look at the wheel pants, just making sure all the hardware is in place. Give them a light little movement, make sure they are not getting, getting damaged. So one of the things that we developed as well, on the top of the wheel pan, there's a, a rubber grommet there. And if you take that off and you look down with the flashlight, you can actually see the indicators on the brake pads. Nice, nice thing to have because you don't need to remove the wheel pad. And then uh, to check the brake, to check the brake wear. And then also while we're on the wheel pants, I do a visual check on the tire pressures. And you can pick up generally if, if there's a low pressure. And you don't want that because for obvious reasons. And also if you load the aeroplane with full load, they squelch out and you get the chance of them touching the wheel pant. And it increases your, your possibility of a puncture, or a flat tire as it's called here. On this side, you'll see there's a nice big rubber grommet there. And if you take that out and you rotate the wheel to get the valve there, you can very easily get in with one of those straight compressed air fittings for pumping a wheel and then checking the pressure. Line up the valve and you stick it, you can get your fingers in there to actually get the valve cap off and you can quite easily inflate and check your tire pressures. Now let's carry on from here. The wing, again on the TSI is a beautiful the leading edge up to one third back is all dimpled rivets. We, not much to pre-flight here other than just the condition. No dents in anything. Up to our first fuel tank here. And then our long range fuel tank. And then lights, switch them on and check that they work. Also very nicely fed in lights. All the control surfaces on all the slings actually have a pivot point here which is a little sealed ball bearing and so there's no resistance on the control surfaces the brackets all of them are nice thick aluminum they are well designed well thought out and although one will always look for cracks look for possibilities i know this is really strong not having found a crack you always keep an eye on it so ailerons you got your little push rod here that you see isn't seizing up and let's put the flaps down for fun. Um, electric flaps, beautiful system. So again on the flaps, a lot of people put them down in uh, pre-flight just to make sure that one, they're functioning, two, you can get to your, your push rod there. And you can just check your hinges down the bottom. Again, nice staunch hinges, also on the sealed ball bearings, which make it maintenance free, basically. Then coming down to the section, nice strong step, which is a great thing on all the slings now. It, initially, they were designed with the flap all the way, and then Mike changed that because people are standing on the flap, and it's really not needed to have that long flap. While we're at this end, parachute, this is the breakaway skin for the parachute. It's got the warning uh, decal for the, to stay clear of this. But this little patch over here is where the, the rocket actually hits. This tearaway skin has got slots under rivets, which have been riveted with a bit of brass stock to be loose. This cover will come off when the parachute is shot. Again, coming back, fairing in place, no cracks, all the fasteners are in. Elevator. So I've got a little thing having inspected many aeroplanes in the factory as they get built. Full up elevator. The elevator should line up with that little mark. Full down elevator. There's a hole here that it should run through the center. Then you know you've got all your, your throws. 
If there was something in the controls or something wrong, you'd quickly pick it up there that you don't have your full elevated deflection. Then just going along looking at the, the hinge points to make sure none of the rivets are working loose and no cracks. Incidentally, after thousands of hours working these machines really hard, we have never found any issues on any control surfaces or any structural. This aeroplane is really strong. And then down in here, you can actually, through the inspection hole here, you can see the push rod for the elevator. You can feel that it's still got play on the rose joint. While you're down here, you can look at the rudder cable, which is a cable on either side. I just like to feel the tension. There's slight tension in there. Look at the fastening. Not much that can go wrong. And while you're down here, look at the hinge point. Next hinge point up here, next hinge point up there. Just to stand back, you can see not much to see again. So then coming around to the left-hand side of the aeroplane, pretty much the same as the right. The one difference here is the trim tab. So we'll have a look at this nice effective trim tab. There's this little hinge along here, little control horn here. Not much that you need to check on, but just an eye over everything, your little lock nut here, your clevis pin. And one of the other differences about the left-hand side is the luggage compartment. In the back here, the luggage compartment ends here, but then it goes back. It's got a small section, big enough for golf clubs or a surfboard, skis, whatever, goes back to this bulkhead. So if you wouldn't put much weight here, but you'd put the seat down and then you could put something long in. In fact, I can sleep in the back of this aeroplane because my feet reach there and I can lie on the back of the back seat. Okay, so we've pre-flighted the aeroplane. We made sure we've got gas, we've got a safe aeroplane. And on the next video, we'll climb inside, show how we get in, how we prepare the cockpit for flight, and then we'll go flying.